Hey everyone, this is David Fighting Motor City Mechanic. Today's video is going to be on removing the AC evaporator in a 2012 Ram pickup. It covers everyone from the 1500 all the way up to the 5500 series trucks. Did I mention where I have to pull the dash too? Don't get scared. Let's check out the steps. Now, I know people are going to ask, so I'm going to go ahead and clarify. This vehicle is a diesel, so as far as gas engine, diesel, there's going to be some different things up under the hood that may be blocking those two studs. Uh, the gas engine, you may have to move some stuff out of the way that you wouldn't on the diesel. Unfortunately, I've got a diesel at hand, so I shot a video on the diesel. Same thing about the center console. Uh, this one didn't have a console at all. Some got a partial floor console, some got one that's actually the armrest on down. Couldn't show you that because, of course, the one I had didn't have one. So, fundamentally, you'll know exactly what you need to do. If I ever come across a repair where I'm taking a console up, I'll make sure I video that so we can actually add that at a later date or just make a notate to go check out this video, whatever it takes. Uh, also, first step you're going to need to do before you do anything is disconnect the negative battery cable. This one's a diesel, it's got two batteries, so you're going to have two negative cables you need to disconnect. Gas engine, just disconnect one because you've got a lot of electrical things you're dealing with, unplugging, messing with. I mean, you're, you're pulling the dash back and the AC box out, so you're definitely right into the heart of the beast. So just make sure you follow those steps. Now, like I said, a lot of things we're going to be taking a lot off are actually duplicated on the driver's side and the passenger side. For example, this seal plate right here that goes up to the kick panel. Just get you a plastic trim stick, grab an edge, you get up under, you kind of work your way. As you can see, this is a work truck, so of course everything's going to be dusty, dirty. Go ahead and get used to that if this is what you're doing for a living. And we'll grab this kick panel and pull it off. So now we got this piece right here. Now, like I said, the driver's side got one too. It just snaps down in place. Unsnap it and sit to the side. This way we can get to the connectors on this side and also any bolts if need be. So I'm going to give you a location where we are. We're on the passenger side again. This is where that plastic seal plate and kick panel cover came off. Uh, these are the connectors we need to disconnect. And this is one of the bolts I had mentioned. We got two that go through the where the end cap is and we got the one up under here. These are all going to be the bolts we need to take loose on the sides. Now, the connectors, we need to go ahead and remove all these connectors from this piece of sheet metal. Grab your panel popper again. Going to get down in here and start working them off one at a time and as you're doing them you can go ahead and start disconnecting them because some of them will come off with the dash even though we're not removing the dash we're still going to be repositioning the dash so we will have to take care of that and those two and then we've got a couple antenna cables we got one with the radio satellite as well if it's got it and a couple of the smaller connectors so definitely get up in here and if you see a a harness that's stuck to it Pop it loose. There's one back here we're not going to mess with. That goes back behind the cover. We're fine. But disconnect any of them that you see. And then we're down to the antenna. So there we go. You can actually see this portion of the harness right here is going to be coming off with the dash. So now we got those disconnected. And like I said, here's that bolt that we're going to be taking loose when it's time for it. Yeah, we need to enter this dash cap taken off. Get your plastic trim stick. Find an edge to get up under. Be gentle, pop it off, get it out of the way. Now one thing I like to do is I go ahead and pull the weather stripping too. I leave it on the car, but I give me enough to just kind of sag down to where I can get to everything. Because as you can see right here, here's two of the dash bolts. One here, one here. We also got one that goes right up under here where that kick panel went. So that's the three on this side. Now one thing to keep in mind is even if you got all the bolts, the dash is just going to fall out because right here where these two bolts are, there's a piece of metal that acts like a hook. It sits into a little hole on the body itself, so the dash actually sits in there so that way it doesn't have to fall out. You actually have to lift up slightly before you release it. So we'll move on to the driver's side, same thing again. Pull that seal off a little bit and get these end cap taken off. Now on the driver's side, there's a connector that comes up from the A-pillar, comes down. We're going to go ahead and get to where it goes right here. We're going to disconnect it. It's got a green connector on this particular vehicle. We need to go ahead and pop the wiring off the sheet metal of the dash. We got one fastened right here, another one right here. 
Now we can sit it off to the side. And this will be staying with the body. I can just move it through the door jam if I want. It won't come off the dash. But while we're in here looking, we got a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. Driver's side has the three bolts right here near the door jam. The passenger side has the two and then the one underneath. So there is no one underneath here. You got the three that are physically exposed as well as on the passenger side. Like I said, you got two exposed and one underneath. So keep that in mind. Now this piece right here that goes below the steering column is the next thing we're taking off. Now it's got two Phillips screws, one here and one over here that we need to back out. Let's get them out. All we gotta do is grab it firmly. Now, we need to make sure the ignition key's out because a portion of this piece right here has the hole for the ignition switch. Go ahead and grab it and pull. It's got some fasteners along it. And then we've got the OBD2 connector on it and the hood release, which we'll leave here. It's not gonna hurt whatsoever. We can just position it here. Now, what I do like to do to give me a little extra room, I like to squeeze in on this OBD2 connector on the sides. And when I squeeze in, I want to get the OBD2 connector off of this trim piece. I'll leave the cable hooked up. That way it can hang almost flat on the floor. Now that that OBD2 connector for the scanner is unhooked, I've got a lot more room. Alright, so at this point we're going to go ahead and move on to those bolts we had mentioned about earlier. we got the three right here on the side. The whole side of the dash in place. These are 13 millimeters. we got three on this side. Now, I know I'm repeating myself, but the best way to remember stuff is through repetition. Passenger side, we got two right here, and we got one underneath where all those connectors were. I'm gonna show you about taking the side off on the driver's side. Passenger side's nothing special. Take them off as well, and then we'll proceed.